On this week's show, we take an in-depth look at one of the most popular small trailers on the market today. Also, Jeff Johnston explains all about the new Thetford Santacon Turbo and why you're seeing it on more and more new RVs. And Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 gives us their tips for a happy campground experience. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Rolling On TV is brought to you by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Every once in a while, an RV comes along that seems to set a new standard in the industry. Its cosmetic good looks, features, and functionality all add up to a vehicle that becomes very popular. Well, the R-Pod trailer from Forest River has been around for a few years now, but it's still flying off the dealer's lots. You know, the R-Pod, its cosmetics is what makes it really easy to identify, and part of one of the things that's made it so popular today. The colors are great, the graphics are minimal, you know, it just looks nice. And part of what makes it really great to tow is its overall shape. That rounded configuration makes it very aerodynamic. The front up here, this helps cut through the wind regardless of what kind of tow vehicle you have on it. It just makes it really, really aerodynamic. And on the back, it's rounded down a little bit and that too helps to ease its passage through the air. Now in this particular floor plan that has a kitchen on the back, they brought the back end down straight, and that allows a little bit better cabinet space in the back for the kitchen. And the width, one of the things that you also see on the trailer, of course, is the fact that it has the fenders and the tires on the outside of the trailer. So the trailer is a little bit narrower than a standard one that lets you put the tires and fenders on the outside, and that means you don't have wheel wells on the inside of the trailer to have to build cabinets and such around. And that's kind of a convenient thing for the designers. And there's a few other features on the outside here that are worth talking about as well. So let's take a closer look. Now this particular floor plan of this trailer has only one exterior storage compartment. They use this really nice new high-tech magnetic latches, which are really handy. And this compartment runs all the way across the, the trailer on the front. In the back, it's a little bit shallower. It's not quite deep enough to be able to put a lawn chair or a camp chair in here. Those will have to go in your tow vehicle or on the floor, for example, inside the trailer. But this is big enough that can accommodate tools and small general hardware. And if you have longer items like tire pumps or anything that's under about six and a half feet long can go in crossways across the front. So it's a small compartment, but it's fairly functional. Now one of the easy spotting features on the R-Pod, and it may be something that part of responsible for its popularity, is the fact that the body is fairly narrow. It's about six foot six outside wall to wall. Uh, that not only helps to make it a little more compact and you know seemingly easier to tow, it also makes it a little less prone to uh, wind resistance. I mean, it makes it slip through the air a bit easier. But that narrow body means it's possible to put the fenders and the tires on the outside. And that too is what gives it a, a look that is a little bit different than your average RV. And it's part of the popularity. This version of the R-Pod is called the Hood River Edition built in Dallas, Oregon, has a couple of features that are different than a standard R-Pod. First, it's got about three inches more suspension or chassis lift. That's provided by the design of the rubber torsion axle, which is a really great way to provide a soft, smooth suspension for a trailer like this. That extra three inches of lift means that you have extra clearance. So if you want to get off the pavement and go to a campground in a remote spot on a dirt road, you have less likelihood that you're going to be scraping or bottoming out on anything. And the Hood River Edition also includes these really cool, uh, heavy-duty looking kind of off-road mud and snow tires. It gives it a little bit of that rugged northwest look along with the uh, custom wheels. It's a fun package. And one of the factors that makes small trailers like the R-Pod so popular is slide-out rooms. 
Now this trailer is approximately 17 feet long in the body, but it's got a nine foot slide out, which is darn near a full wall slide out in something like this. Now this slide out contains the dinette over on this end and the refrigerator here, which is adjacent to the rear kitchen. We'll see more about those when we go inside the trailer. But this slide out adds so much extra space. It's not extremely deep, but it's deep enough that that adds extra floor space, lets you make the dinette a little bit bigger, and generally speaking, it adds a lot of livability to a small rig like this. Well, the outside of the R-Pod, the cosmetics, is what catches people's eye the first time. And there's good reason for that. It's a great looking little trailer. But let's take a look on the inside. There's a lot of features in there that really make you realize why it's so popular and what makes it so great for livability. Let's go take a look. We'll be right back with more about the R-Pod trailer after these commercial messages. Stay tuned. Simply put, Thetford's AquaChem has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaChem, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaChem, another great product from Thetford. We didn't make the majestic mountains, or the rugged terrain, or paint the night sky, but we make it possible to see it all. Road Trek, America's number one selling touring coach for over 25 years. Built with quality so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the destinations you want. Enjoy the peace of mind that only a Road Trek can provide. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Let's continue our look at the Forest River R-Pod trailer, one of the most popular lightweight trailers on the market today. Nice. These little R-Pods have been pretty well known for having a tremendous amount of space and functionality on the inside. They've done a good job of designing things. Now this one happens to be the R-Pod 179. It's got the rear kitchen, side dinette in the slide out, and a forward bed. Now this rear kitchen arrangement, this is really great for cooks because uh, if you happen to have cooking as kind of an emphasis for your RVing, this is a nice setup because it covers wall to wall in the rig. You've got a lot of open counter space here for working on food stuff. Little cover comes off the sink, and then when you're not using the sink, of course, you have more, more space there. And over on the other side, your generic suburban two burner stove, which does the trick. I mean, we're not gonna be doing any big Thanksgiving dinners in a small trailer like this. So the two burner works great for making our morning coffee and such, and that's really important for us. You've got a quite a variety of storage spaces down here, wide open space down here, some drawers, another handy cabinet over here. It's a very nice arrangement, and it's got enough space here so that if the cook is working over here, people can walk in and out along the other side without banging into the cook. Very handy. Over on the side here, this is the uh, back end of the slide out, and of course you have your Dometic two-way refrigerator. Actually, this is a three-way because it'll do both 120 volt AC gas and 12 volt electric, and a nice size microwave oven which we find really handy. And this is all, again, very conveniently accessible to the kitchen. And the rest of the rig, we'll go back and take a look at the, uh, the dinette, bathroom, and so on. This version of the R-Pod, the 179, has what amounts to being, like we mentioned on the outside, pretty much a full wall slide that includes the refrigerator, the microwave, and this dinette. And this U-shaped dinette is, is, for a little bitty trailer, it's pretty darn big. I mean, you can accommodate four people sitting around here very easily for a card game or something like that. And uh, it's pretty comfortable. The seats are, you know, you can uh, adjust the cushions and such as needed. And this table is portable. So in addition to positioning it inside where you find the best use for it, uh, you could also take it outside, for example, and use it in your campsite. And it also adjusts for level, 
and this isn't quite so smooth operating at least I don't get do it right but um, you release it and this folds down far enough that you can turn this into a bed area as well lock it back up there so this turns into an additional sleeping space which would be kind of kind of snug unless it just happens to be a couple of little kids so uh, if if cooking is important to you when you're looking at a floor plan you kind of you know you kind of look at what you want to emphasize or what you, you really need or want out of an RV if you got a cook in the family who really likes that um, then this would be a good choice because of that big kitchen across the back end and and that all this is also be a good one for entertaining because you have this good sized dinette and you know to give you some place to hang out in case you're out on a really nasty day or something along those lines this floor plan includes a wet bath it's got a toilet kind of a built-in shower and a really small sink in the corner it is functional and it'll do what it has to do but it's not exactly what you call one with stretch out room Another one of the R-Pod floor plans, on the other hand, has a bath that goes across the back of the vehicle with the separate shower. So it kind of depends on what's important to you. If you like, if, if you really want a good quality, a good size shower, you'd probably pick that other floor plan. Now this one also has a full size bed up front. We'll take a quick look at that. What you might describe, that's full size bed, maybe you can call it an RV queen or an RV full size, but um, it's plenty wide uh, because of the small overall size of the trailer. It's like the trailer is about six foot six wall to wall on the outside. The bed space is about six foot three inches approximately from wall to wall. So for the average size person, they're going to fit it just fine. Um, I can't say that I fit, but then that's because that's my problem because I'm too tall for this sort of thing. But it was a very comfortable mattress and we slept okay on it. And that's kind of uh, when you're when you're looking at RVs and you have your priorities one of my personal priorities is having a comfortable place to sleep more so than having a giant bathroom for example so this would be kind of a floor plan that I would be interested in and my wife likes to cook so the big kitchen would be cool for her this would be a great floor plan for us but the bed area you got good sized windows on both ends for plenty of cross ventilation nice illumination up here uh, we'd kind of like to see a couple of lights up by the head of the bed but you know that's one of those small details everybody has different opinions about those things the television is on a mount so you can swing it around you can watch it from the dinette area or move it back and be able to keep watching it from the bed area and this of course is also adjacent to the stereo which is really close to everything next to the bed got a nice hanging wardrobe for shirts and things and that's top tops uh, another three a set of three storage drawers there's a surprising amount of storage in here and there's also storage overhead up above the uh, dinette which is very handy before we leave camp and hit the road our pre-departure safety checks include wheel lug nut torque and tire pressure both important for safe towing the R-Pod was a good matchup for our Nissan Frontier pickup and would likewise tow well with other small vehicles. Easy handling and effortless towing made our Oregon Coast adventure even more relaxing and enjoyable. About the time that we were finishing up our road test story on the R-Pod, Forest River announced the 2017 model of the new trailer. It's more of that's kind of a refinement and a refreshing rather than a major makeover. Included on the new trailer are, of course, the attractive new blue color scheme. The Frog logo is now in a canoe. And as far as hardware is concerned, you have an awning available as one of the option packages. There is an uh, electric jack up front, which makes hitching a little bit easier. And the suspension has also been raised a little bit to provide a little more of that ground clearance. It comes in pretty handy. Altogether, the R-Pod just keeps getting better and better. It's certainly worth a look if you're interested in a lightweight trailer. For more information about the R-Pod trailer, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Just a quick note, the SantaCon Turbo is now available on all Jayco products as a dealer add-on option. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. 
Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. If your RV is still using a water heater with 100-year-old technology, isn't it time you switched? Truma AquaGo. Instant, continuous, and endless hot water. For more information, visit truma.net. We all know that RVing is a wonderful thing. It's one of the best ways that you can spend your spare time. But there's one part of RVing that almost anyone who uses one of these rigs will tell you is the least favorite part, and that is getting rid of the waste products. Well, last year at the Louisville show, the big trade show where we'd look at all the new products for the coming year, something that really caught our eye at the show this year was the new Thetford SantaCon Turbo Macerator System. It's a waste disposal system that's going to change the way you dump your waste. Not only did the SantaCon catch our eye, Jayco thought highly enough of the product that it's now available as an option on all the company's 2017 fifth wheels and soon to be available on the travel trailers. The system connects to the plumbing waste part of the system, obviously, and in this case, they've got it down here underneath the frame. This is the SantaCon turbo pump here. Jayco's engineers have integrated it into the waste part of the sewage system. Most of them mount right here on the undercarriage of the coach. In the event that an RVer should happen to be nostalgic about his conventional 3-inch dump tube, Jayco has included a bypass valve so you can still do a dump with your old tube just for old time's sake. Well, Jayco's designers have integrated a handy storage compartment here to contain the, uh, the, the hose mechanism. If you're accustomed to working with the 3-inch diameter flexible dump hose, the Anaconda as it were, you'll find this a pleasant surprise. And this is always connected so you don't have to fasten anything for, uh, for dumping. It's a 21 foot hose so you don't have to be right next to the dump station either. Now Thetford has designed several ways that you can connect to your dump station. One, the black cap here on the nozzle contains a standard size garden hose thread. In the event that your dump station is a long ways away you can stretch out as much as 150 feet of hose which means you, of course, have to keep your hoses definitely separate. And the nozzle itself is stepped and has three different sizes of threads, so you can fit virtually any type of dump station around the country. Now, most dump stations, of course, you won't use the garden hose. You just simply remove the nozzle cap, remove your dump station opening, insert it in the dump station, give it a bit of a twist to tighten it down, and you're good to go. Next step, once you're connected to the dump station, is open the holding tank valve, come back to the uh, system here, flip the switch, and you're emptying your holding tank. Then you just wait a few minutes, you listen to it run, and when you hear the, the motor begin running at a little different speed, make a little different sound, shut this off, go back over, close your holding tank valve, the storage procedure is pretty easy. Disconnect from the dump station. Cap the SantaCon nozzle here. And because everything is always connected and you don't have to mess with it, just feed the hose back into their convenient storage compartment here. tuck it away and sometimes it may feel a little bit like pushing a piece of string up a set of stairs to do this but it'll feed in there. Pack it away and you're finished dumping for this time. We see an awful lot of new products at Louisville each year. A lot of them disappear from the scene within about six months because they're not really solid or don't have a ser serious use. This Thetford SantaCon product is not one of those. It's a solid dependable item that's going to solve a real RVing problem for a lot of people. It's almost as easy as pumping gas. 
So the SantaCon Turbo, it's something that is going to make your RVing experience that much more fun because you don't have to put up with the worst part of the RVing experience anymore. Coming up after the break, we'll catch up with Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 for this week's RV Tip. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, Visit us online at jayco.com or just log on to rollingontv.com. For 50 years, Campers and RV has been your trusted resource for RV sales, service, and accessories. Now, with 15 locations along the East Coast from New Hampshire to Florida, we'll be giving you that same family-friendly service and be your trusted resource for another 50 years. For information and locations, visit us online at campersin.com. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. A major part of the camping experience is the campground experience. Today I want to offer some tips to help make your next day at a campground as pleasant and carefree as possible. Let's get started. If you know where you'll be staying, make campground reservations in advance. With the reservation, there will always be a site waiting for you when you arrive. Plan to stop traveling while there's plenty of daylight to get set up and get settled in at the campground. When you arrive at the campground, ask any questions you have about the site, like if it's a pull-through site. If you are not proficient at backing, this can help ease the stress of having to back your unit into the campsite. Make sure the electrical source is compatible with your RV's electrical system. If it's hot outside, request a site that's in the shade, if possible. This will help the refrigerator and AC work more efficiently. Check the site for any overhead obstacles that might interfere with setting the RV up. And when you position the unit on the site, make sure there's enough clearance for slide outs and the patio awning. Campground voltage can fluctuate depending on the demand. I recommend using a quality surge protector to help protect your RV's electrical equipment and appliances in the event AC voltage drops below 105 volts or goes above 130 volts. Keep a variety of electrical adapters on hand in case you need them. You should also have an extension cord that is compatible with the electrical system on your RV. Use a water pressure regulator at the campground to prevent damage to your plumbing system from high water pressure. Always connect the pressure regulator at the water source and then connect the drinking hose to the regulator. Use a drinking safe hose to connect from the water source to the RV. It's a good idea to have a 4 foot, 10 foot and 25 foot hose on hand so you can always reach the campground water hookup. Take a different colored hose for all other uses like flushing out holding tanks or cleaning the RV. If you're going to be leaving the campground for more than a few minutes, it's a good idea to turn the water supply off until you return. Better safe than sorry. Lock your RV and secure valuables when you're not physically at the campsite. Keep a spare set of keys for the RV and other vehicles. It's a good idea to have a 10 foot and 20 foot sewer hose available so you can always reach a campground sewer connection. Spend a little extra and get a heavy duty sewer hose. Keep an assortment of sewer hose adapters and connectors on hand. Always stow the awning when you're not going to be at the campsite and leave it in the stowed position at night. Practice good campground etiquette and be sure to leave the campground in the same condition you found it or better. Hopefully these tips will help make all of your campground experiences more enjoyable. And when you want to learn more about your RV, visit www.rveducation101.com. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's program. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos and stories from current and past shows, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. As usual, this has been another fun production. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. 
This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org.